In this video, we talk about the magnitude and direction of a position vector. So let's define what a position vector is for a point. Consider this 3D space. We have X axis, we have Y axis, and we have Z axis. All three of them are perpendicular to each other. For this X, Y plane, where X and Y axis are, we have this Z axis perpendicular to the plane. All right, so this is our 3D space. We have this point P, if we move from origin 0, 0, 0 to this point P, let's have the coordinates for this point P as X, Y and Z. So from O to P, this vector is called the OP vector or the position vector of this point. So for a point P, X, Y, Z, a position vector with respect to origin is OP vector. This is the position vector for this point. Initial point is 0, 0, 0 and terminal point is X, Y and Z. This is usually denoted by the small letter P. If this point is capital P, then this vector is usually denoted by small letter P. So this is P vector. All right. What's the magnitude of this position vector? Let's figure this out. So if this length is what we are after, this is something that we have done in the previous grade class 11th. So pause the video, recall what we did to find this magnitude, this length. Okay. Let's do this together. So, if you have to move from origin to this point, we'll move along X axis and then along Y axis and then along Z axis. So this length is X, this length is Y and this length is Z. Now, if you were in 2D, we would have to deal with only one right angle triangle, but because we're in 3D, we're dealing with two right angle triangles. First, this one, the red one, and then this one, the white one. Now, what do we do here? What's our strategy? We use these two lengths, the blue and green, to find this length, the hypotenuse of the red triangle, and then that hypotenuse becomes the base of this white triangle, and then we find the hypotenuse of this white triangle. This gives us the magnitude of this position vector. So let's do that. First, let's look at the red triangle. We have our X and our Y, these two lengths. If we use the Pythagoras theorem, we have this length as square root of X square plus Y square. So far, so good. This length, now we can use as the base for this, this white triangle. So this one is root x square plus y square. This one is z because that's the z coordinate. And this length, this is the magnitude of this vector. This is going to be square root of this square plus this square. So x square plus y square plus z square whole square root. This is the length or the magnitude of this position vector. So if the coordinates are x, y and z, then the magnitude is square root of x square plus y square plus z square. Now let's talk about the direction. We can do this in two ways. First, we have direction ratios. Let's see what direction ratios are. For this point P, 4, 3, 2, direction ratios are just the coordinates of this point 4, 3, 2. That's it. These are our direction ratios. But what does it really mean? This means if you're moving from origin, towards this point 4, 3, 2, that's the direction that we're after. This is the direction of this position vector. Think about it. You're moving from origin to this point 4, 3, 2. You are moving along this line in the direction of this point. You want to approach this point. This gives us the direction of this vector. But if that's the case, there are many more direction ratios. We're also moving along the other points on this line. In fact, any multiple of the coordinates will do because we're only concerned about the direction. This point 8, 6, 4, it's twice as far from origin, but this also lies on the same line. If you're moving towards this point 8, 6, 4, you'll definitely pass this point 4, 3, 2. You're moving from the origin, you're moving in the same direction. So this also gives us the direction of this vector. In fact, 40, 30, 20, 10 times this is also along the same line. So this also gives us the direction. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, one tenth of this, this will also give us the direction ratio. So any multiple will do. Any multiple of 4, 3, 2 will do. All of these will be the direction ratios of this position vector. So these are called the direction ratios. When you ever see one direction ratio of a position vector, you can figure out many, many more. Now let's look at direction cosines of the position vector. As the name suggests, we'll be taking cos of some angles. So this means angles are involved. So in this scenario, 
will measure the angles that this vector makes with x, y and z axis. Positive x, positive y and positive z. So this blue angle is what this position vector makes with the positive x axis. If you flip it around, you can see that this makes this green angle with the y axis and this red angle with this z axis. So these three angles, blue, green and red, we can label them. If the angles made by the position vector with x axis is alpha, y axis is beta and z axis is gamma, these angles are called direction angles and cosines of these angles are called the direction cosines. So these are called the direction cosines of this position vector. Now how do we find the cosines? Well for cos we need a right angle triangle. Let's look at one of them. In this right angle triangle we have the base as the x coordinate and the hypotenuse as the magnitude of this vector. If we've already figured out the magnitude, let's call it r, then x upon r, let's call this l, that's cos of alpha. So this ratio x upon r, that's cos of alpha, y upon r will be cos of beta and z upon r will be cos of gamma. In general, we like to denote them as l, m and n. And there's a neat relationship here. x square plus y square plus z square is r square. This is how we figure out the magnitude. If we replace x as l times r, we get l square r square plus m square r square plus n square r square, that's equal to r square. And we can take the r square common and cancel it out. What we have is l square plus m square plus n square equals to one. So all of these costs are related, which means all of these three angles are related. Cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma, all of them add up to one. So these are called the direction ratios, the cos of these angles. In general, we use these to get the direction of a position vector. Let's practice. Here's a point 4, 3, 2. Let's find the magnitude and direction of this position vector OP. Pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, let's do this together. The magnitude is square root of x square plus y square plus z square. These are the coordinates. So we have 4 square plus 3 square plus 2 square. That's 16 plus 4, 20 plus 9, 29. So the magnitude r is square root of 29. That's the magnitude, that's the length of this vector. All right, what's the direction cosine? For that we need cos alpha, cos beta, cos gamma. We'll not actually measure the angles, we'll take the ratios. So cos of alpha is x by r, cos of beta will be y by r, and cos of gamma will be z by r. We know x, y, and z, that's four, three, and two, and we've already figured out r. So cos of alpha, that's four by root 29, cos of beta, that's three by root 29 and cos of gamma, that's two by root 29. So these three are our direction cosines. Now, before we wrap this up, let's have a quick word on cosines. Why do we use cosines and not sines or tans? Think about it. What do you think? Why do we have direction cosines and not direction sines or direction tans? All right, here's my answer. The first reason is that they have a convenient relationship with the coordinates. Look at this, cos of alpha is x by r, cos of beta is y by r and cos of gamma is z by r. The numerators are the coordinates of this point. You'll never get this in your sine or tan. This only works for cos because cos is base by hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the same r and the base is the x coordinate of this point. In this other triangle, the base will be the y coordinate and in this third triangle, the base will be the z coordinate. So because these coordinates are the base of these triangles, it's useful to get the cos of these angles. Another reason is, if we have the cos, we directly get the coordinates of the unit vector. Now unit vector will have the magnitude one and the direction will be the same as the direction that we have for this vector. So if we have the cosines and we use them as the coordinates, four by root 29, three by root 29 and two by root 29, this directly gives us the coordinates of the unit vector. If you square them and add them, you'll get the magnitude equal to one, which means this is the unit vector. And the third reason is, which we'll discuss later in this chapter, cos appears in the dot product, which is really useful in figuring out projections.